Hello YouTube, Mikey Cal here, and this is video number 11 in my series on utilizing Blender as a video editor. Now, in the previous video, I showed you how to precisely maneuver the strips around the sequencer, and I introduced you to the box zoom feature, which is a great way to quickly zoom in on your strips and do editing. Now, in today's video, I want to talk about image imports. And really, there's only two kinds of images that we deal with in the sequencer, and that is images that have transparent backgrounds, and images that don't have transparent backgrounds. So let's get started by importing an image that does not have a transparent background. Let's go down to the Add menu and select Image. And we're going to select this JPEG file. And you'll notice that it has a white background and that it imported the strip to the location of the green line and that the strip is a really tiny sliver. So this is a perfect opportunity for us to use that box zoom feature. Let's hold our shift button and hit B. That gives us the crosshair. Now we can use our left mouse button and drag the box over the area we want to zoom. And there you go. Now let's right click on the right handle of the strip and hit the G button and pull it to the right. And let's zoom out to our full view. And you'll notice that the right handle is still selected, so we can just hit our G button again and pull it over the desired number of frames. Now you'll notice it's covering all of the frames. Now what did you notice about this image after we imported? Well, it filled the entire frame, and it shouldn't do that. This is actually a much smaller image than the 1280 by 720 resolution that we have here. But this is what Blender does with all image and video imports. It just spans them to the full, the full size. So let's fix that very simply by right-clicking on our image strip and going to the Properties. And you'll notice there's a feature or a checkbox here called Image Offset. Watch what happens when I select this it brings it to the correct proportion size. So now we just need to move it to the part of the window that we want this to be displayed. So we can do that by using these X and Y coordinate boxes. You can click on the X box with your left mouse button and drag to the right. And you can click on the Y box button and drag to the right. And that brings it up to our right corner. Now. Where's the movie in the background? Why isn't it showing that? Well, it turns out that Blender needs to be told that this image is an overlay. So there is a feature in the properties at the top. It's the blend feature. We need to switch this blend setting to overdrop. And there you go. Now you can see it's covering all these frames. Now, that's what it looks like if you use a non-transparent image. Let me skip ahead. I'm going to place a transparent image in the same location, and we'll talk about that from this point on. So I'll be right back in a second. OK, I just went through that identical process of importing an image, except for I imported an image with a transparent background this time. And I wanted to stop at this place right here to show you guys that you need to use the blend setting of alpha over for images that have transparent backgrounds. And this will just force Blender to recognize the alpha transparent channel of the image. So there you go. And you can see that transparent backgrounds work very nicely when you use them as overlays. They're cleaner. They give you a more organic shape instead of having that blocky rectangular image. So you guys might be wondering right now, how do I change the size of this image? Well, that's going to require that we use a transform layer. So the way that we do that is we select our image strip, and we go down to the Add menu and select Effect Strip and Transform. And whenever we create a transform layer, or transform strip, we need to remember to hide the original strip. And we right click on that and go to the Strip menu. And we go to Mute Strips. This will prevent the original strip from interfering with the new transform strip. So now let's click on our transform strip. And you'll notice that it doesn't respect the transparency again. We need to go back over to the Blend setting for the transform strip. And we need to select Alpha Over. And there you go. Now, when we scroll down here, you'll notice that you still have your positioning x and y coordinates, so you can just drag these. 
but you also have scale and rotation now. So I would recommend that you keep the actual proportions of the image by hitting the uniform scale button. And we can now just drag this left and right, and that will shrink and grow. And you can also go down to this rotation setting, and you can spin it around. Pretty cool. Now we can see that that actually covers all these frames. I think that should do it for what I want to talk about today. That's the simplest way to import images, change their size, and rotate them. See you guys in the next video.